The Democratic Convention took care of some business last night. The Dems formally nominated Joe Biden for presidency on day two of the convention. This came after a virtual roll United call States. vote, which seemed to resonate surprisingly well. It featured diverse people at picturesque locations from coast to coast and around the world. Dr. Jill Biden delivered her speech from the high school where she used to teach English in the 90s. She said her husband has what it takes to bring us together and make us whole. Meantime, social media was buzzing about former President Bill Clinton. He used his speech to attack the current president. Watch. If you want a president who defines the job as spending hours a day watching TV and zapping people on social media, he's your man. Denying, distracting, and demeaning works great if you're trying to entertain or inflame. But in a real crisis, it collapses like a house of cards. COVID just doesn't respond to any of that. To beat it, you've got to actually go to work and deal with the facts. Okay, Erica, um, my twin, I'm not gonna get used to this. Yeah. Um, okay, so the fact that Bill Clinton, and I was reading the tweets last night, I was reading um, just 10 minutes ago what DBL Nation is saying, a lot of you feel like that he did more harm than good. Do you think that Bill Clinton was the right man to lecture about behavior in the Oval Office, Erica? I think that Bill Clinton was the right man to address, um, to have the address that he made, um, simply because we're speaking about someone who has experience in this White House, has experience leading a nation. And what the real message behind all of these speeches are, experience versus experiment, right? Michelle Obama talked about in terms of uh, Trump has had plenty of time to figure this out and he has not met the task. He's not up to this occasion. Um, when we're talking about experience versus experiment, we also have to bring in Dr. Biden, who also continued in the classroom even when she was serving as second lady. So I think that when we're looking at the grand scheme of things, we're not speaking to people who don't want to be spoken to. We're speaking to people who are either on the fence or already are going to back this campaign and back this ticket. And I think that's exactly who we need to speak to. Interesting. Do you agree, Al? I do. Uh, you know, in, Bill Clinton's a polarizing figure. Everybody in politics is an ultra polarizing figure because at this point where we are in our politics, no one that's not polarizing gets elected. I think the days of the kind of robotic Republicans like Bob Dole are gone. The days of the, uh, the kind of the, uh, the, the kind of generic Democratic candidate are gone. I think you need to be considered what some people say is extreme when you look at an AOC or you look at a Matt Gates. You need people to say inflammatory things to, to get attention and look at our president. So I think this is kind of par for the, par for the course. Okay, um, listen, I'm still waiting for your comments, Michael Dean. Okay, I have them. This is coming from DBL Nation as we speak in real time. I always want to make sure I bring in your voice. Um, in regard to the uh, convention last night, we have Molly on YouTube. AOC didn't even talk about Joe Biden. What a joke for the DNC. Uh, Davis on YouTube. Oh, now we're seeing Republicans switch to Joe Biden's side. What a joke. Um, and then we also have Nelson, whoa, matching dresses, love them to bits. Thank you. Um, listen, I know that we're going to have two sides here because that's just the way it boils down to. Unfortunately, now it becomes so partisan and I hate that. I wish that we weren't so partisan when it comes to uh, politics, but given that we are how many days until the election, it's going to get worse and worse and worse. I hope that we can remain civil. This was one part that really struck me last night. The security guard, if you guys remember last night, um, Jacqueline Brittany. So she works at the New York Times. If you did not see this, this is a security guard at the New York Times. She takes or escorts rather many powerful people uh, up, to, up that elevator in that New York Times building, whether it be interviews. And she said that Joe Biden really saw her, really spoke to her, really took the time, really tried to understand her and her needs. That means something to me. I'm going to put politics aside, whether you are a current pres president, whether you are Joe Biden, whether you're Al Jackson or Eric. Cobb. I want people who have a conscious, I want people who treat people with empathy, and I want people who see everybody for who they are and hope that they can empower them and uplift them. Some people say that that's me with rose-colored glasses, but I don't I, think you said anything that crazy, Sam. I completely agree. Yeah, I, but it, unfortunately, it is that crazy because I'll tell you who really benefits from this, benefits from us fighting. Think about like if it is a situation with, with infidelity. The best situation for that guy is the two women 
to go at it because now he he's absolved of any responsibility. Great point. And of any, uh, so as long as we keep going back with these identity politics and things like that, you know, guess what? Everybody's kids are still at home. Guess what? No one's gotten their second stimulus check. Guess what? 80% of the tax cuts went to the to the 1% to the 10%. So as long as we're fighting and name calling and talking about taking somebody's we're guns distracted. or abortion, all these yep. kinds of things, we'll continue to live the life that we're living. I know. I want us to all be in this together somehow. Call me naive.